seen so many burpees done by you, man. So it's good to finally see you uh, just chilling. Yeah, it's um, it's a rare state for me to be in. Just in general, to be chilling is a rare state. Do you want to give me a quick background on you? You know, what yes. you were doing before the burpees and uh, what you're doing now? Well, I'm Dave Wetton. I'm 39, but I'm a week away from 40. So I'm nudging that big 4-0 pretty hard. I'm Australian, but I have traveled around the world and I, and I love the States and I love American people. And when I came back from San Francisco last year, I, I was itchy to do something that was going to make a long-term health benefit for me. And I had always lifted weights. I'd always run kayaked. I'd been active. And then Australia had its first lockdown. I started looking for something that I could do every day it would be a global whole body exercise and that wouldn't burn me out. And funnily enough, after typing in burpees into a few searches, I come up with a bloke called Chase Matthew Barron, who did a hundred a day for 30 days and followed it up with 200 for 30 days after that. I looked at you and I thought maybe the burpee is for me. And now you're doing one year of burpees. How's that going? No day gets any easier. That's what I thought. I think you know, and I know, and many of your listeners who are tuned into health and well-being and fitness would know that one type of exercise only has limited effects in terms of muscle growth and the like. But after I had done my first month of 100, I did 110 per day which only spurred me on to do 120 per day in June and then 130 in per day in July and 140 in August, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190. I've got March to do, that'll be 210 per day. And technically I finish on April the 2nd. Actually, just, just to make the, the number round, it'll be 220 per day. But Chase, <clears throat> it's not about the burpees. <laughs> I know it's not about the burpees. Damn, I didn't know you were doing that. Yeah, it's it's not about the burpees. I, I see the types of people who follow you, and I'm one, and I hope that you're nodding along going, yeah, you, you're right. For me, whatever fitness I do, it's not about it's not about the running. It's not about the rowing machine. To, to, to borrow a phrase, it's not about the bike. I started this, firstly, because you inspired me. Secondly, because I wanted to get as fit as I could by 40. Third, because COVID has taken away from us so many of the sureties and little incidental guarantees in our daily life. But I wrestled that back and I reclaimed 20 minutes of my day. No matter what happens, you're certain that that's going to happen. At least you hit the pillow at night knowing that you did that one task, that really meaningful task that um, only really has meaning because because you decided it does. It only really has value because I've decided it does. There are so many other examples in our world of things that apparently have value, but only because individuals or collectives agree to them. One of them I would say is currency, but really it's no more than a piece of printed paper or plastic. And yet we strive for that dollar or that $50 in, in whatever work we do. <clears throat> there are the birds on the outside now. And yeah, I think to yeah. myself, why, why, what, what are we doing here? We're only on this earth for a very finite time. Are we making an impact for our physical health, mental health? Are we doing good things by other people? Are we contributing to our community or broader world? Burpees is not contributing to the broader world directly, but I'll tell you what it does do. It changes my mindset into one of gratitude and it eliminates the bitchiness, the gossipy nature that we can all develop by just focusing my intention on that 20 minutes a day. And that mm -hmm. soaks up energy and emotion. And I'm happy that I can use that soaked up time for positive. This is a, an amazing time on Earth's history to look deep inside ourselves and say, what am I doing for myself today? Because when you do something good for yourself, you end up doing good for others because you're in a better frame of mind. That's my take. Also, you know, what you're saying really gets me thinking about all of the benefits of exercise that have nothing to do with physique changes. Being here now with the movement has insane mental implications. There's so much that you can learn about putting in and effort, time and dedication and developing patience. And I think that's one of the, the biggest benefits I've seen given the uh, blessing of a platform and a community that I have is people aren't coming to me. Well, they are coming to me showing them like their before and after photos. But what I love even more than that is when yeah. they write me 
their before and after mindsets. I don't know that what that really hits home more than any physical change ever will is when someone develops that exercise routine or that mindfulness routine and it blossoms yeah. into, into a different mind state. Oh, well, we've got hundreds of, of sinewy muscles, hundreds of them, but only one hypothalamus, only one brain. And it's the best thing to train. It's not about the burpees. It's not about the rock climb. It's not about the meditation, but they are fantastic vehicles towards training your brain. Sure, you know, we all take our shirt off at some point to go to the lake or the river or the beach, but that's only one person who you think might, and to be honest, they're probably too busy with their own stuff going on that day, look over and go, that guy's ripped or that that girl's in terrific shape. But the deeper thing is the circle of extended family and friends around you who are happier because you're happier within yourself. I think that's a pretty powerful gift to be giving your friends, family, and extended um, network every day, rather than just waiting for their birthday or Christmas to give them some sort of a physical thing, to, to, to be present, to be better, to be more in tune, to do physical exercise every day humbles you. I, I feel when I talk to you, you've really thought about what you value and you perceive the world in a way where you're striving for that family value. You're not wrapped up in currency is what I'm saying. I guess what advice would you give to somebody struggling to find out what they truly value. You know, people out there that don't know what they want, so they just seek money, fame, that next beer, or that next hit of sugar, or whatever it is. People that are struggling to, to develop that system that motivates them, you know? I, I would say, I would draw an analogy as I watch a kookaburra, which is one of our, our native birds fly by right now. Kookaburras nest overnight in empty logs. But they get up at the crack of dawn and they fly off and they have an eventful day getting the skinks, the lizards, the food, building their bird community, feathering nests, living a bird life. Be like a bird. Get out from that log and go and fly because that hollow log, whilst it's nice at night, that is the sugar. That is the excess alcohol. That is the whining. That is the gossiping. That is the, the delay an obstification in achieving your goals. Your ultimate health is your ultimate wealth. Many years ago, when I finished as an elementary primary teacher, my sense of self crashed through several basement floors and I was severely depressed. And I went and sat in the local office of a guy who is a realtor and has made it big as a property developer. He's not a particularly healthy man at all, but he is a great man in our community, a really great man. In ancient times, he would have been a chief. And I literally sat in a ball in the corner of his office rocking. That's how bad the situation had got. In fact, it had got worse days before that. And Phil is his name said, Dave, I'm not going to turn around because I've got to keep typing this document, but I'll just say this, mate. Your very best asset is you. Your very best asset is you. 